Okay, so volume three is all about your boy Ainokoji taking out his massive dong and just using to beat the crap out of both class A and C and my oh my, is it satisfying to watch? And in this video, you're gonna see exactly how that goes down. Okay, so we start off on a deserted island and all the classes have to do kind of like a loss slash survival deal for like seven days. And man, it's so hype because this is the first time our boy Ainokoji is playing to win. Okay, so here are the rules. Every single class starts off with 300 points. And if they manage to maintain those 300 points through Throughout the entire test, they'll get to keep them at the end. And along with the 300 points, they're also given some camp accessories like tents, matches to help them survive, but it's not nearly enough. But not to worry though, because every single team is also given a brochure full of necessities that they can buy, like food, camping equipment, etc, etc. But here's the deal. Every single time they use the brochure to buy any necessities or anything at all, they start losing some of those initial 300 points. So it soon becomes a balancing act between, you know, buying the things that you need and not dying because you didn't buy the things that you need. And listen, our boy Ana Koji was willing to work with this class because you know he stuck with them but you know after he saw them fight to the death over a goddamn toilet he was just like nah I think I need to solo carry this. Luckily for him there were special rules that let him do exactly that. You see all over the island there were these points called spots. These spots were perfect campsites and if you held on to one of them for say eight hours you would get an additional extra point but they came with a distinct disadvantage. In order to capture a spot your class needed to appoint a leader and a leader had a key card but at the end of seven days, every single class had a chance to guess the leader of the other classes. And if you're a leader and you were guessed, you lose 50 points. But if the person guessing you as the leader was wrong, they lose 50 points. High risk, high reward, right? Not exactly, because if you're a leader and you're guessed out, your class not only loses 50 points, they lose all the bonus points they've accumulated up till now. So if you were guessing other people's leaders, those points, gone. If you were capturing spots, those points, gone. So this was Ainokoji's win condition. And with that, we start day one. So so in order to find the leaders of the different classes, Ainokoji needed information. So he volunteered to help find a spot for class D. So he was paired up with Koenji and Sakura. Koenji didn't really matter at all because he'd just do whatever he wanted. And Sakura, well, Ainokoji could just wrap Sakura around his little finger. So she was a non-factor. On this mission, Ainokoji was anything but aimless. You see, on the ship, he had already found the first spot, the most perfect one, the cave. It wasn't anything special about the cave, but near the cave, there were two other spots that people could monopolize. Bring your point bonus to 60 instead of 20. But once they arrived at the cave, they had to quickly hide because from the cave emerged two students from class A, Yahiko and Katsuragi. This wasn't ideal since class A getting the best spot is just not good. So Anikoji waited until the two students were gone and then he went inside the cave and checked. Sure enough, class A had taken over the spot, but this was a huge mistake. You see, when the two students were standing outside, Katsuragi had the key card in his hand in the beginning. Now, class A is not stupid. They're not going to have their leader walk out of the first spot when everybody's exploring and have him just carry the key card being like, oh, look, I'm the leader. There's no way that they're going to be doing that. So it's easy to assume that Yahiko was actually the leader of class A. And with that, Ainokoji just kind of backhanded class A. Their bonus points are gone. These spot points, they don't matter anymore. And class A wouldn't even get anything out of guessing other people's leaders. So with that, they headed back to class D and things were looking pretty good. Class D had found extra food. They found a river spot that helped them get drinking water, they were even able to get a fire going. But on the way to collecting firewood with Sakura and Yamauchi, Aina Koji discovered a girl with a bruise on her face. Her name was Ibuki, and apparently she got into a little fight with Ruin and was cast out by herself. In the beginning, she was really combative, telling them that they're stupid for trying to help her out. But at the end, she caved and followed them back to their base. And Hirata, being just a wholesome dude that he is, is like, yeah, we'll take her in and give her food. But to make the river their spot, Class D also had to choose a leader, and they ended up choosing Horikita because the others stood out way too much. And man, it was all looking so good. They even squashed the beef they had over the toilets. But you know, Class D, they can't really go a single day without making Ainokoji's life harder than it has to be. So at the end, Koenji retired, costing them an extra 30 points. Okay, so now we move on to day two. So far, Class D has lost up to 100 points, way better than Ainokoji expected. But he wasn't stupid. And while Class D bought the whole, oh, I got kicked out of Class C act from Ibuki, he wasn't so sure. So he went through her bag and discovered that she had a digital camera. This would become important later on. Throughout the day, Class D got invitations from both Class B and 
class C to come check out their spots. Anakoji gathered together Horikita to come hang out with him. He didn't really care for Horikita's attention or companionship all that much, but he did need to keep an eye on her condition. She was sick, and since she was sick and the leader, she would be a very important tool during this whole challenge. And when they visited class C, Anakoji could not believe it. All around you see people in swimsuits, meat, barbecues, jet skis, everything and anything you could have wanted, which led him to the conclusion that Class C was using the same strategy he was. And after talking to Ruin, it was clear that they were going for a zero point strategy. Anakoji knew at that moment, Ruin was the guy to beat. Next, they visited Class B. And really, the easiest way to explain this is just to say they're a better version of Class D. They sprinkled water all around their camp to deal with the heat. They had a system to get fresh fruit and berries. They used the well to their fullest advantage. They used water showers that cost less points. All around, they were just better optimized. They even ended up using hammocks as beds to minimize the cost. They were just so well unified. Ichinose and Horikita talked it out and they decided to maintain their alliance throughout the entire thing. This was great for Anakoji since he wanted Class B's cooperation anyways and 50 points just wasn't worth making an enemy out of them. Last but not least, they ended up visiting Class A and they had an interesting setup. Vinyl was all over the cave so nobody could really see what's going on inside and Horikita did make an attempt to just go in and check and she was able to almost talk her way through Yahiko but Katsuragi showed up and threatened her saying that hey if you go check it out we're gonna come to your base and I'm pretty sure you don't want that. So Horikita backed off. On day number three Anakoji was starting to put his plan into motion so he went into Ibuki's bag and poured water on top of the digital camera. This would put pressure on Ibuki making her do whatever she needed to do without her digital camera and give Anakoji more intel on how class C was gonna operate. Nothing more eventful other than that so we move on to day four. At this point things were just looking better and better. Class D was adapting to their environment, they went fishing for their food, they got berries, they were able to maintain the situation, stop the infighting, come together, and Hirata was really pulling all this together, so it was great. So since everything was kind of balanced out, Anakoji used this chance to go exploring because he still needed a bit of information to pull off a rock slide win. Anakoji headed out to Class A's spot to see if they were monopolizing the two other spots nearby the cave, and sure enough, Class A had captured all three of those spots, so they were speculating an extra 60 points at the end of this test, but on the way there, Anakoji was caught by two students from class A, but he was able to flip the situation around on them and ask them the following question. Hey, are you guys working for Katsuragi? And the two students were like, no, are you stupid? Katsuragi is not the leader of class A, it's Arisu. So here was a really important piece of information that there was a lot of infighting inside class A. This information would become vital later on. Okay, so now that he had a better idea of what class A was up to, he needed a little bit more information on class C. And when he went to the beach, sure enough, everybody was gone. There was not a single soul on the beach, which means they're going for the zero point strategy. So we move on to day five. And this is where everything takes a turn and not in the way you really think it should. The only way I can really explain this day is just a giant crap show. Early in the morning, all the boys were woken up because apparently somebody had stolen Kay's underwear. Fascinating. The dudes weren't really a big fan of the false accusations flying around. So they're like, yo, we didn't do it. Why are you blaming us? But the girls were relentless and they were sure that the boys had done it because who the hell else would do it? So they decided all of them would have to have their bags checked, which they kind of just surrendered to after a while. But before the back check, Ike noticed that he had the underwear in his bag and he was just freaking the hell out. He went to Anakoji and is like, dude, what do I do? And Anakoji is like, don't look at me. And Ike instinctually just hands the underwear over to Anakoji and he's like, I hate this. But he's just like, you know, it's a back check. They're not going to check me. It's fine. I'll just hold on to it. And after the back check came a pat down where he was like, well, crap. And Hirata searched Anakoji. And before Anakoji could write his will down, Hirata actually let him go. After which Anakoji approached Hirata asking him, hey, why did you just let me go? And Hirata was like, dude, you don't seem like the type of person that would steal underwear. But I do have one condition. You got to help me find the thief. This was perfect for Anakoji since this gave him more of an excuse to move around without it being suspicious. But man, this is just the beginning of the crazy show that are the girls on this camp. Next, they're like, yo, you gotta help us move the tent away from the boys. And the boys are like, yo, move it yourself. We're not gonna help you. And after a big, massive, heated discussion, it was Anakoji and Hirata who had to move the tent. Great, more work that doesn't mean anything. But somehow this whole tent moving debacle had a silver lining. While Anakoji was setting up the tent, Ibuki came to talk to him. And for God knows what reason, she just pretty much revealed Class C's hand. Ibuki had a really 
bad habit of looking at people when she was lying and she was looking straight at Aina Koji when she said that she wasn't the thief. This completely set off alarm bells for Aina Koji so he was spying on Ibuki the rest of the day and noticed that she kept going to the same spot over and over again and when he snuck into that spot he noticed that there was a transmitter on the island. That means Ruin was 100% still on the island participating in the test. Aina Koji also made sure to check up on Horikita throughout the entire day and just as he expected her condition was getting worse and worse by the day. This was perfect. It would be showtime soon. Okay quick sidebar here. The next part of the story has nothing to do with the main plot but I thought it was so freaking funny. You guys need to hear it. In the middle of the night Aina Koji is just trying to get some shut eye right and Sudo just starts dreaming about Horikita and he literally just holds on to Aina Koji and this man is massive. He's dreaming about Horikita. He's about to dry hump her and Aina Koji notices this so he just jumps out of his bed. Quote on quote the words he uses as Sudo was about to put a scarring experience on me. Oh my goodness. <laughs> well for better or for worse Aina Koji is now wide awake and with that we commence day six and being honest on day six the weather wasn't too hot. It was rainy. It was cloudy. So Aina Koji would have to pull off the last part of his plan real quick. So Aina Koji volunteered to go help looking for food and with him he dragged along Horikita, Sakura, Ibuki and Kushida and also Yamauchi came along because didn't you just hear there were four girls here. Of course Yamauchi is coming along. All right time to get things started. Aina Koji talked to Horikita telling her that hey I need to see the key card for a quick second because there's a little thing I just want to make sure is happening. Horikita was like okay nothing strange about that. So she pulled out the key card and gave it to Aina Koji. Aina Koji while taking the key card deliberately made sure it fell to the ground and he noticed that Ibuki noticed as well. Then he moved over to Yamachi. He was like hey dude wouldn't it be really funny if you just took a bunch of mud and just put it on top of Horikita's head. Yamachi's like no that'd be terrifying because I would die. Aina Koji's like but don't worry I'm gonna give you Sakura's email address if you agree to this. And Yamachi's like okay I'm supremely horny so yeah let's do it. So he walked over and put mud on top of Horikita's head and yeah she was ready to just kill him right then and there. But this helped just bring along that fever Horikita had to an absolute boil and she was not looking good. So they decided to head back and since there was a giant line outside of the shower, Horikita and Kushida decided to bathe in the river. Aina Koji just laid back chilling out. He just went back to his tent and after a bit Horikita approached him and she was looking freaked out of her mind. Then she told him that the key card had been stolen. Perfect. The pressure Aina Koji put on Ibuki earlier by sabotaging her camera was starting to bear fruit. All right time to really turn up the heat. So Aina Koji snuck into Hirata's bag, found the brochure to buy stuff and just set it on fire in a tent. Obviously this sent all the students into chaos. It just started an absolute crap show. Someone was like hey this is probably the same guy that stole the underwear. Other people were like no why are you blaming people and Hirata looked like he was having a mental breakdown and within all of this commotion Horikita noticed that Ibuki made a break for it so she followed soon after. And to just put that delicious cherry on top it started to rain. Aina Koji leaned back for a second really enjoying the situation he just created and after a bit of time he started to slowly follow Ibuki and Horikita. With the rain, the darkness falling soon and under normal circumstances this would have been almost impossible but he had two set of clean tracks in the mud to follow and the path went deeper and deeper into the forest to the same exact spot where Ibuki buried the transmitter. But soon he saw a spotlight and quickly hit himself. Neither Ibuki nor Horikita should have a light source on them so it was clearly somebody else and he had no idea how right he really was. Soon the figures emerged from the darkness and it was Ruin and Katsuragi and they laid out the entire plan for both class A and class C. You see the conflict inside class A was real bad and Katsuragi absolutely needed this win to assert his dominance so he ended up teaming up with Ruin. The plan was simple. Class C would buy all the expenses class A needed so all the luxury you saw was only 100 points. The real bulk of the points the 200 are actually spent to buy all the supplies for class A. But Aina Koji wondered what would class C get in return for this? It had to be something massive. After Aina Koji made sure that both Ruin and Katsuragi and Ibuki were gone he approached and saw Horikita lying in the mud beside a big tree. Her key card that said that she was the leader was lying right beside her. Good thought Aina Koji. That means that they both know for a fact that Horikita is the leader for class D. Aina Koji picked up Horikita with cold cold dead eyes and just 
thought to himself, Harikita, I never thought of you as a friend. I never cared about you as a classmate. In this world, winning is everything. Your methods don't matter. I don't care what I have to sacrifice. As long as I have my victory at the end, it'll all be fine. You, Hirata, know all the other people are nothing but tools to me. I was complicit in what drove you to this. So don't blame yourself. Horikita, you were useful to me. Oof, enough to send chills down your goddamn spine, dude. And with that, Ainokoji carried Horikita back to the ship and there was a teacher standing there on duty and she was like, what the hell's going on? And Ainokoji's like, hey, she's collapsed. She passed out due to a fever. She needs to retire. And the teacher's like, okay, but your class won't have a leader. Do you want to appoint someone? Ainokoji's like, yeah, me. And with that, everybody, we're at day seven. All the students were gathered at the beach, ready to count all the points together. Anakoji had already given the correct names of the leaders to Hirata. With an added twist, he said that they came from Horikita instead. And man, all the students were so surprised that Ruin showed up and Anakoji's like, yo bro, this guy's been here the entire time. And so they announced the points. Now in this section, I'm gonna do a little bit of a breakdown to just show you guys how they got the points that they did. Because the first time when I heard these points, I was just like, wait, how does this even make sense? Okay. Okay, so class C was last place with zero points. And my man, you should have seen the look on Ruin's face. So by all accounts, class C should have wiped the floor with all the other classes. But here's what happened. They started off with 300 points. They spent 100 points parting it up and the rest was used to buy supplies for class A. Now Ruin already knew the identities of all the leaders. So that should have been an easy 150 points right there. And he also captured two spots on and off. So that's an extra 26. But since our boy Ayanokoji guessed him as the leader, bye bye points. Class A came third place with 120 points. Okay, so class A situation was a little bit complicated, so let me explain. At the end of the test, they should have had 430 points. They started off with 300. Arisu was absent from the test, that subtracted minus 30. They didn't spend any other points since Class C bought all their supplies for them. They held on to three different points, netting them an extra 60. And they also knew the leaders of both Class B and Class D. That's an extra 100 points. Now here's where it all goes downhill. Because of our boy Ainokoji, they guessed the leader for Class D wrong, so this negation the 50 that they would get and adds the other negative 50 for guessing the leader wrong. And from there, they got their leader guessed twice, bringing down their points to 230. And remember the three spots that they were occupying? Well, those are gone now since their bonus points are also gone. And to put the cherry on top, there were specific rules with spots that if you maintained them improperly, you'd get a negative 50 point. And there was a spy inside of class A working for Arisu that made that happen for them. So they lost another 50 on top of that. Man, everybody was after class A. And obviously, Katsurogi was boned because he managed this so improperly and he's losing power over class A. Class B came second place with 140 points. Theirs honestly is really easy to explain. They started off with 300 points. They held on to a spot for an extra 20 points, but Ruin and class A guessed their leaders. So they lost 120 points right then and there. And they were able to actually survive off of just 40 points, which is super impressive. So next up is class D and this is going to be a bit of speculation on my part. So you need to bear with me. Like most of the other teams, they start off with 300 and held on to a spot for 320. Now here's the messed up part, both Koenji and Horikita retired and they missed a roll call, bringing their entire score down by 65, making it 255. Now here's where Ainokoji comes in. They lost nothing from the leader guess and they actually gained 100 from guessing both class C and class A's leaders. And from there with their day to day expenditure and all the other things added up, they lost another 130 points, bringing their points to 255. My boy Ainokoji by himself was almost a difference of 200 points, almost twice what his teammates were able to save. All the class D students are rightfully like, yo, what the hell just happened? Anakoji also made sure to push all the glory onto Horikita. So once she woke up, all the students just surrounded her. And after a while, she was able to break free, come to Anakoji to ask him, hey, what just happened here? Anakoji was like, okay, I'll tell you, but you got to keep it on the down low. So Anakoji filled her in on everything. How at the beginning of the test, he only cared about the special rules, how he already knew about all the spots, how he figured out that Ibuki was actually a spy and he how figured out that Ruin was still on the island and the deal between class A and class C and how he even pushed to have her retire. At the end, Anakoji told her that, hey, I could help you reach class A, but only under one condition. Do not, and I repeat, do not look into my past. As long as you can do that, I'll help you. Horikita's like, pass smash, just help me out. And with that, the actual battle for class A was about to begin. Man, that was a hell of a chapter. All right, there's a few bonus things that I want to point out that I think you'd be best 
deserve knowing. By the way, if you want the best experience of like anime and light novel plot points to read, just pick up the manga, dude. The manga for this is such a beautiful in-between between what happens in the anime and what happens in the light novel. I really can't recommend it enough. All right, first of all, I want to talk about our boy Anakoji. So what we know so far is that he has a dad who's trying to contact him at the school. And the main reason Anakoji chose to attend the school is because he does not want to talk to his dad. So him being in the school gives him the freedom to not have contact with his father. So that's why he's here. That's all we know so far. Pretty sure we're going to get insights slowly within the next volume. And next up, Sai Sensei. Boy, this was a doozy dropping the fact that she was actually at the school as a student when she was in high school was really eye opening. And the fact that they were in competition with each other back then as well. And Sai Sensei's class lost by just say a few points. And the main reason for their loss was her just showed so much about why she's willing to blackmail Aina Koji. She's kind of vicariously living her life through Aina Koji. And I think at this point, a lot of the teachers are doing the same thing. I'm pretty sure the teacher for class C, the teacher for class B, and even the teacher for class A, we haven't had an introduction with yet. I'm pretty sure they were all students in their respective classes. So this is going to be so fascinating to watch. And lastly, we got to talk about Horikita. She probably had the most intense character arc that we've had so far. I'm assuming her personality is going to start mellowing out a little bit in the next few chapters because she just got a dose of reality at how far behind Aina Koji in class A she really is. So I think moving forward, she's going to be just the central figure that Aina Koji controls to control the entirety of class D to get to class A. And I'm so excited to see how that turns out. And I hope you guys enjoyed that. Leave a like, subscribe if you enjoyed the content, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.